Welcome back to the show, everybody, and today we are going to be learning about paint stains. I've showed off paint stains before in a couple videos, but I wanted to do a deep dive video because it's a technique that I'm still experimenting with and playing around with and enjoying it so much because there's so much you can do with it. Uh, but I wanted to go over some of the pros and cons before doing a short, concise, this is exactly how you do it type of video. So why don't we just get started? So to begin with, what is a paint stain? Plainly put, it is simply a heavy paint wash. The reason why I call it a paint stain rather than a heavy paint wash is because it's a better descriptor for the technique. Wash, you normally just want it in the recesses. However, with the paint stain, if you think about it more like a wood stain where you want to heavily stain the wood, but not completely cover it up as if you were painting over it, you, know, you still want that wood grain showing, I think that's a bit more of an accurate description. Now before we get into the actual staining process, we first need to put down, I like to call it the canvas layer rather than the base coat layer for reasons that should hopefully become apparent shortly. Now because our two-headed giant here has the bald heads, he had a bit of a stone giant look to me. So I wanted to go for a gray skin. Not completely gray, but just a, a sort of a gray base coat. And we're going to transition that into more uh, pink or brown flesh tones towards the highlights. Now the reason that we do not start with gray here and once again, why I would call this the canvas layer is because the heavy stains we're going to put on this color are going to greatly affect how it looks. So we actually want to start with a fairly light color, lighter than what we want our base coat to eventually be. Next comes our paint stain, and here's where it gets a little bit tricky. This needs to be thicker than a wash, but we don't want it so thick that it completely covers up our canvas layer. So it takes a little tweaking. It depends on what colors you're using, but as I said, this is also, I'm calling it a very heavy paint wash. Uh, you want it to the consistency where it's going to cover up the canvas layer, but not entirely. And you can see here, I'm just slathering it on. Because we're not thinning the paint too much, we don't have to worry about tide marks or anything like that. And we can apply a very thick layer. If you're not sure about the proper consistency, as always, I recommend going a little bit thinner than too thick. If you apply it too thin, you can always apply a second coat once it dries. If you apply it too thick and completely cover up your canvas layer, well, then you're gonna have problems. Other than getting the consistency right, the second issue here is you wanna make sure you get every little single spot of, in this case, skin. If we leave anything uncovered, well, that's really gonna be really hard to uh, blend away later on in the technique. So be generous, slather the miniature, don't worry about any tide marks. With our stain dry, we can now move on. And in this case, I'm actually going to add a secondary wash. The stain provided the color that I wanted on the miniature. However, it did not provide enough shade. So I'm gonna take neutral gray, a slightly darker gray color, and mix it with some violet. And this color I have thinner than the stain. I have this mixed up more like a regular wash. So this is gonna dry more in the recesses. It's gonna add a little bit of color to the skin, but not as much as our gray stain did. While this is not a carefully applied spot wash, I'm trying to be a little bit more conservative with this wash, uh, applying it more in the recesses or areas I think we need a little bit more color or shade. But as you can see here, um, not being very careful, putting it on with a very large brush because any mistakes, we're gonna clean up those a little bit later. So 
since this is a very large giant, I decided he needed even still more shade. So once again, using gray, this time we've moved down to German gray, much darker gray color. And also once again, mixing that with violet. And for this final wash, this is a definite spot wash. You can see here, I'm applying this much more specifically, using it as a dark line, putting in any uh, deep recessed areas, wherever I think we need a little bit more shade. So now over our heavy skin tone, we applied one wash, one heavy paint wash, uh, one more general wash, and then a spot wash. So we have three washes over our initial uh, skin tone. And you can see hopefully now why I like to call it canvas layer because that color has been heavily tinted and is kind of a, a shell of its former color. So where do we go from here? That's the big question. Another thing I really like about paint stains is that you can apply them and then just call it a day if you want. This model looks pretty good as is. However, I have a few lines here and there, lines of color, because I did not apply the stains that carefully. And that's fine because I knew I was going to be adding highlights onto this model from the beginning. But if you want to apply your stains a little bit more carefully and just call them, you know, put the stain on and call it a day, you can do that. It's up to you. Now here's where the paint stain technique gets a little bit tricky. If we want to highlight, we need to first figure out what our base coat color is. And remember, it's no longer the canvas color of heavy skin tone because that color has been heavily dyed. Instead, what we need to do now is to figure out what color is the base coat on the giant. And that might involve mixing in new colors to the scheme to figure out a perfect match for what's currently on the miniature or model. Now, in this particular case, I got very lucky because two of the colors that I initially used mixed together were actually a pretty good match, violet and heavy skin tone. However, you can see here on my palette, I have some brown sand, I have some heavy warm gray because putting a color as a wash over another color and mixing those two colors together, you won't necessarily get the same color in the end. So you may have to use a completely new color by adding brown or a different shade of gray or whatever have you, depending on what color you use to stain what color. So once we got our colors figured out, we can now apply them and you can see how very thin I have the paint here. That's to make the blends easier. And this is essentially a clean up stage. This is establishing the base color, the base coat color on the model and is cleaning things up, making sure everything's smooth. The highlights are gonna be able to easily, easily be applied in the proper places. And also it's establishing the color and the areas for which the highlights will be built upon. Once we have that new base coat color mixed and everything's clean on the model, it makes the rest of the highlighting fairly easy. From here on out, we're just using standard layering technique. For our first highlight color, I'm taking heavy skin tone and mixing that with brown rose. And that's gonna add a little bit more of a pink tone to our skin. So you can see right now, we're gonna have quite a variety of colors in our skin. And that's another benefit of the paint stain. It allows you to bring in a lot of different colors into your miniature. And it's a lot quicker than applying a whole bunch of different glazes. For our second highlight color, I'm mixing in some game color pale skin. That is because the brown rose is about the same color and tone as the heavy skin tone. So I can't simply just add more brown rose. It's just gonna make it more pink, but not highlight it. So the addition of the pale skin gets us a lighter color of the color that we previously applied.
And then our third and final highlight color, brown rose mixed with pale skin. So now we've eliminated the heavy skin tone and we have a very light pink color skin that we are adding a little bit excess on the face because we always want to draw interest to the face but we're using this mainly as an edge highlight color. So picking out the knuckles or any muscles that uh, stick out extraneously that need a little bit of extra highlighting. We are gonna finish off the model with a little bit of glazing. Normally I just use very, very, very thin gory red for that. However, in this case, adding some brown rose as well to the mix. And this very thin color just adds, well, a little bit of color to the model. Shows a little bit of warmth under the skin. It's always good to add it to the nose, the cheeks, I usually add it to the back of the hands. In this case, I did go a little bit excessive because I wanted a little bit more warmth to the model. So applying it to a lot of the highlight areas overall. With the skin done, let's move on to something a little bit more simple. Let's paint the tunic. For that, I'm starting off with my canvas layer of Alejo Game Color Khaki, and I am covering that with a paint stain of Camo Olive Green. So this is going to obviously stain our khaki a much more green color, and it's also quickly shading our tunic much faster painting than if we spent all the time layering this area. That's another benefit of the paint stain. It's speed along with being able to mix colors that you normally wouldn't mix together. Just like with the skin, we are following up our stain with a paint wash. In this case, olive brown mixed with military green. And we don't have a whole lot of shadow or shade areas on the tunic, so we can apply this exactly where it needs to go with a spot wash. For our cleanup and highlighting stage, I switched over to Vallejo Model Color Khaki. It's a completely different shade than Game Color Khaki, has much more of a green tint to it. And once again, canvas layer we put down, we put a green over that, so now we need to come up with a new color to get back to our base coat color, or create a new base coat color. So in this case, right out of the bottle, uh, our model color khaki was a perfect color to do the cleanup work on our now green dyed game color khaki. From here we highlight twice more, adding pale sand each time. One of the times I managed to keep it on camera. And we are finished with our tunic. So hopefully by now you're seeing the benefits of the paint stain. It's a quick way to add color to your paint and also add shade. You have options, you can just put it on and leave it as is, or you can go through the extra effort, go the extra mile, add some highlights to it, and just a huge variety of things you can do with it because you don't have to worry about mixing paints together. You're just putting one on top of another. Moving on to the metallics, and putting paint washes over metallics is not something I would recommend for a knight in shining armor type of look, but it works perfectly for more used, uh, unkempt armor like we would expect to see on a two-headed giant. We are going to start off with our base coat, and we're going to do them both at the same time here. So I'm using Army Painter Gunmetal for the gray areas. And then our bronzed areas is Vallejo Model Air Rust. Over the bronzed areas only, the first color we are going to stain with is Vallejo Model Color Camo Black Brown. And you can see we put it on and that rust color immediately gets very dull because the paint is much more opaque than inks would be.
Next, we apply a wash of black green, and we are gonna blend this in using the best tool in our arsenal, a finger. I'm just softening it, feathering it into the rest of the rust using my finger, basically using it as a blending tool, and works perfectly well. Your finger is uh, very useful in painting, so whenever possible, give your miniatures the finger. Now for the gunmetal, I am starting off with dark Prussian blue as our wash. And if you notice, I'm putting the blue down first here, while on the bronze, I put the green last. The reason is, well, because I want less of the blue showing and more of a just a, a dark iron color. So the blue is going to get more covered up if we apply it first. And then we finish up with a black wash. This is a dark line wash for the bronze, but this is a shading wash for the iron bits, the gun metal. So it's a two purpose wash here. That's why I painted them both at the same time because we can take care of everything in the end with the black paint wash. Last but not least, we need to do a little bit of edging, and for that I'm using a mix of rust with camo black brown, just to bring a little bit of sparkle back to the bronze. Not bothering to do this with the gunmetal areas because those are more recessed. Also, I have the camo black brown mixed into the rust because using straight rust over this surface, it would be too shiny, so I have to compensate for the fact that we applied so many paint washes to our girdle. The last thing I want to show you is how paint stains can actually fix mistakes on your miniatures. I don't have a whole lot of bright colors on this giant, so I decided to add a little bit of color around the leg wraps. So I base coated first with Game Color Parasite Brown, and then I realized that was is too bright of an orange color. Now, I could have repainted it a different shade of brown, but an easier fix is to use a paint stain. In this case, I used charred brown, which significantly darkened the orange, made it much less bright, and blended it more into the rest of the colors on the miniature. The charred brown significantly darkened our parasite brown, however, I still need a little bit more shade, so a panel line wash of black mixed with military green will both darken all the little recesses between the wraps and also ties it into the rest of the model, especially the tunic, by adding a little bit of green to the shade. Going back to our base coat cleanup stage, because the Parasite Brown has been so darkened and browned, I don't have to use that as the base color anymore. I can just switch over to Beastie Brown, which is much more uh, appropriate color and also, again, less bright than the Parasite Brown was. Then from here, we are going to add two highlights for the first highlight, mixing in Desert Yellow to our Beastie Brown. And then the second highlight, because of all the edges here, we need to go a little bit more extreme, I'm going to be adding pale sand to the mix. So as you can see, I made a little mistake in my color choice. Rather than repainting it, instead I decided to go with the paint stains and the heavy paint washes, and not only changed the base color that we started off with, the canvas color, but also made it much more interesting because we had orange and then we shaded it with brown then a little bit of green and now I'm highlighting with yellow and uh, pale sand, very light color. So making the whole piece much more interesting and very easily applied simply by using paint washes. And there we have our finished paint stained two headed giant. So I hope you have an idea of what you can do with paint 
stains. Uh, as I said before, it's basically a heavy paint wash, but hopefully it's a little bit clearer here why I like to call it the paint stain, because we're staining that base coat or canvas layer, whatever you choose to call it. Also, it's a very versatile technique. Uh, you can use it thick or thin over a variety of surface areas. It's a great way to blend colors uh, that normally you can't blend together. And also it can be a, a quick thing, just applying it for some shade, or you can go back and highlight it, clean it up for some extra detail. Downside is it works kind of like a wash. So on large surface areas like the skin, it's more likely to pool or you get some lines that are gonna need some cleanup. It's better used on smaller surface areas, but uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, the main thing I think here is you can do this with the paints you already have. You don't have to go out and buy an $8 bottle Games Workshop contrast paint. You can do the exact same thing at home with the paints that you already own. Your paints are multi-purpose depending on how you thin them. Use them to their best effect. So that is it for now. I hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Okay, we're going left. I say we're going right. Will you two quit arguing? I'll decide. No, we're going left. That's fair. We're going left.